What it do, cuckolds? It's your boy, the hater, up in this piece, you know what I'm saying? And the hater has a quick announcement to make. The hater has been neglecting Instagram and Twitter, but soon enough, in the next few days, the hater will take those things seriously. It is up to the hater and all of you to follow me on Twitter and on, on Instagram so that we can start shaping the way that people look at wrestling, all right? It's as simple as that. It's time for action. We cannot let the form of entertainment, notice that I didn't say sport, that we love go down the wayside because of people like Cucky Rhodes and Triple H. Nobody cares about these guys anymore, and it's time to make our voices heard. In addition, the hater's voice is very loud, and the hater will start talking about other things in all of these platforms, including the YouTube. So without further ado, we gotta talk today about the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight. Some of you have asked me for it, but because it is such a great cultural event, in my personal opinion, we need to discuss it either way. First of all, let's get one thing straight. This is one of the most significant moments in the history of combat sports, only because it was live and relatively free on the Netflix cuckolds, the Netflix, right? Netflix is something that hundreds of millions of people have. Netflix gets so much money, it ain't even funny up in this. So that right there changes the way that pay-per-views, quote unquote, operate. Strangely enough, we must give credit where credit is due. This is but another extension of the genius of Vincent Kennedy McMahon, who did this first with the WWE Network. Vince McMahon understood that the pay-per-view model is not as profitable. The reality is, fewer people are gonna be able to get pay-per-views, especially with boxing and UFC, where they're like 80 bucks or something egregious like that. It's absurd. Most people are not gonna be able to watch it like that. For example, I wanted to see the UFC, but I'm not gonna be paying 80 bucks for that, you know? I had other things to do, decided to watch a movie instead, just looked at the results afterwards. Now, I know a lot of people stream, right? They stream the things illegally, and that's another way that this cuts into it. A lot of people are gonna be willing to watch something on the WWE Network, or for example, Peacock, or in this case, uh, Netflix, uh, because they understand fundamentally that they'd rather pay like $10 a month and watch these things with a good stream, which Netflix didn't have to be fair, but uh, consistently they will get better, and that way more people are gonna be able to watch it, right? If it's within uh, arm's distance, like if a pay-per-view was five bucks, I don't think anybody would stream it. They would just pay for the pay-per-view and they'd be like, oh, okay, I get to see it perfectly, you know, without any problems versus uh, loading the streams like, you know, like these, de these degenerates tend to do. Now, with all that being said, let's talk about the event itself. The event just felt like a big deal. It's as simple as that. It felt like a big fight, even though by all intents and purposes, it wasn't. The hater is a big fan of boxing, but I didn't care, nor did I have the time to watch the under. Card. I watched the last round of those two girls, and quite frankly, if you know anything about boxing, based on only on that round, it was not a good fight. It was two girls doing what's called a burnout in boxing. They were throwing one-twos and the occasional hook and beating the hell out of each other. Now, this is great if that's what you want to see, and a lot of people want to see that, right? That's why Max Holloway in UFC gets a lot of respect, because he's willing to step in there and quote-unquote bang, right? However, if you're a purist like me who likes the sport, you don't really like that kind of stuff. I like technique. I like weaving, I like bobbing, I like jabs, distance, you know what I mean? And if you saw the hater right now on in his car, because this is an episode, obviously, of Hater on the Road, right? I'm doing the movements, right? Because the hater is a big boxing guy. Now, because the hater is a big boxing guy, there's a few things that I want to say about this event. Number one, it goes without saying, but we need to say it anyways. Mike Tyson is obviously one of the goats. Mike Tyson is arguably the greatest boxer of all time. In my personal opinion, it's either Mayweather or Tyson Fury, but Mike Tyson is right there, obviously, right? Mike Tyson, youngest world heavyweight champion in a real sport. Mike Tyson, an absolute boss, right? However, I should note this. Jake Paul is also a talented boxer. Now, you're going to hear a bunch of MMA and boxing channels tell you otherwise, but these are people that never put on gloves, let alone get in the ring like the hater has, right? If you know anything about boxing, you know that Jake Paul is a very talented individual. Now, am I saying he can beat Canelo Alvarez? 
No, of course not, right? But he can definitely hold his own. And this is evidenced by the fact that the odds were whatever when it was Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson, who's like 130 pounds and, and an NBA player, right? He's a small guy. Jake Paul whooped his ass, right? Then the odds started getting not disrespectful. They started getting reasonable because nobody knew what Jake Paul was capable of doing, right? Versus Ben Askren. Oh, Ben Askren is only a wrestler. The amount of time Ben Askren has spent hitting bags and learning boxing is far greater than that that Jake Paul had at that time and probably today, right? MMA fighters spend a lot of time boxing even if it's not their forte. And despite this, he butchered Ben Askren, right? And a lot of people started saying, well, Ben Askren was too rattled from the Jorge Masvidal knee, etc., etc. Then came Tyron Woodley. He beat his ass in a relatively decent and close match. Then they had a rematch where he ended Woodley's career. Now, I know a lot of people are like, this is set up. It is not set up because ain't no way that uh, Tyron Woodley, who as far as I know had never been knocked out, is going to take a life-changing knockout like that. Another thing that people that have never done combat sports don't realize is that if you do combat sports, it hurts a lot, motherfuckers. And if you get knocked out, you likely are never going to be the same again. If you get knocked out flush like that. Of course, if you get knocked out at like a bar fight, you'll be fine because you're not getting hit by like a big strong motherfucker, hopefully, right? But that's the idea, right? These things change your life. And no amount of money is going to have Tyron Woodley stand there and take a career and life-altering knockout to the head, right? Then the, the standard was moved once again. Oh, well, Jake Paul can't beat any boxer. He fought the very capable and very underrated um, Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury won the fight, but he did knock him down. You know what I mean? So that goes to show that he is a solid boxer. Another thing that he did was after um, Anderson Silva beat, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Julio uh, Cesar Chavez, whatever. I forget his name. For some reason, it's skipping me now. He beat that guy who's a former world champion, right? And then everyone was like, oh, well, Anderson Silva surely is going to knock out Jake Paul. Jake Paul whooped his ass too, exposing the fact that we've all known. Anyone that's done combat sports, seriously, like your boy, knows that no fighter in the world is a god. The way people talk about UFC fighters is you think they're gods. They're like, oh, if Mike Perry wanted to, he could go to any bar and beat up any guy. No, he can't. There's a lot of tough motherfucks that are strong and can fight that don't go into professional sports, right? Jake Paul represents that kind of person. Now he is going into professional sports, but he's someone who's just very athletic. And I've, I've said it once and I'll say it a hundred times. Athleticism, right? Strength and speed, mostly strength, always beats technique. Mike Tyson has a hundred times more technique than Jake Paul, right? Mike Tyson is one of the greatest of all time. Mike Tyson is likely stronger to this day than Jake Paul. But Mike Tyson doesn't have the athleticism anymore of Jake Paul, right? So he got his ass beat, right? Mike Tyson was gassed out really quick. He was out of shape. Forget about the lies they tell you. He trained eight months. No, he didn't. If you had someone like Joe Rogan, who presumably is in really good shape because that's all he talks about, right? He would have done better than Mike Tyson considering everything. Jake Paul would have whooped his ass too. But he would have had more stamina, presumably, right? And that's the idea. Now, in addition to this, Jake Paul has been dropping fools left and right. Like I said, he dropped Mike Perry as well. You know what I mean? He's just beating the shit out of people that we were told were gods. Mike Tyson does not enter that equation because Mike Tyson is no longer a god. And I think only a, a complete moron would think that Jake Paul would lose to a prime, I mean, would win against a prime Mike Tyson. Almost nobody can beat a prime Mike Tyson. You understand what I'm saying? But this was not prime Mike Tyson. He was out of shape and he got gassed out early. After the first two rounds were done, I knew it was over. Mike Tyson effectively had a 0% chance after the first two rounds. And quite frankly, out of respect and out of mercy, Jake Paul let him continue. Because if Jake Paul wanted to, he could have obliterated Mike Tyson at that point. So it's time to put some respect on Jake Paul's name. I'm not saying that he's fighting like fucking Canelo Alvarez and, and like, but you know, people like Gervonta Davis, who is a, a very excellent and very capable boxer, is also a small guy and size matters and fights. It's as simple as that. That's the way that the hater sees it and that's the way that it was. Now let's talk about the underperformance of various people, right? Mike Tyson did not underperform. In my opinion, Mike Tyson overperformed. And with that being said, 
he he deserves some some merit for this, right? He held his own. He didn't collapse completely, right? Jake Paul let him live, right? But it wasn't because Mike Tyson can't do it anymore. Mike Tyson, in my personal opinion, and I know a lot about these things, just came into the fight relatively out of shape. Now, a lot of people think out of shape and they think fat. No, Daniel Cormier is a fat bastard sometimes, but he always came in in shape. In shape in the context of boxing and MMA means how much cardiovascular ability you're coming into the fight with. Mike Tyson looks like a beast, but he didn't have the cardio. The first two rounds, Mike Tyson was excellent. The first round, I should say, because the second round, I went to get my food, so I didn't really watch it. But the first round, Mike Tyson was excellent, and he looked like a threat. And if Mike Tyson could have kept that going for eight rounds, he would have won. But he can't, right? He didn't come in prepared. Now, obviously, a lot of people are going to say this was fixed. And it goes without saying that there is an element of that going on. I believe that Mike Tyson never had any aspirations of winning this fight, and he never thought that he had a chance against Jake Paul. So what they did was an exhibition fight. They're actually friends in real life, and they just went backstage, and they said, here's how it's going to go down. You know, the first two rounds, we'll take that shit seriously. But eventually, you know, if Mike Tyson gasses out, I'm pretty sure Jake Paul said, look, I'm not going to go full-blown, right? And this was evidenced at the end of the eighth round where Jake Paul bowed to him, and gave him that, right? There was a round, like round three or round four, where Jake Paul hit, hit Mike Tyson with, they called it three hooks. It was more like two hooks and a, and a jab, kind of, right? And he hit him right on the head. And if he wanted to, he could have done that again in the subsequent rounds, but he didn't. So with all that being said, that's where we find ourselves. The fight was not entertaining, but the event was noteworthy. And with that being said, cuckolds, take care of yourselves.